Holy cow, let's welcome myself back to YouTube. It's been a while since I've been out here just because I've been working full time again, which dominates my world. But I still am kind of self quarantining when I'm home. I'd say I've since about Memorial Day because uh, work kept feeding us and we were getting bigger and bigger collectively. I think my whole office is, is just bloated out of town. I decided to uh, really hardcore get back into keto and get good habits because I'm not getting any younger. Uh, and so, yeah. But my keto, I'm pretty, I would say I'm pretty boring. And so if I, if I was going to do a recipe thing, watching me cook a steak or eggs or bacon or a bulletproof coffee, which I have done before, would be very old school and boring. But uh, because I've been kind of keeping myself at home, I decided to enhance my culinary skill in the world of keto. I am pretty good in the kitchen. People who know me will tell you that boy can cook. So uh, I actually took a couple regular recipes and threw a keto twist in the ingredients. Uh, I'm going to do that now. I, uh, chicken Kiev. Uh, that's the first one I wanted to start with. Chicken Kiev. Probably about gross calories, maybe five, four or five, and then net calories, two to three. You can't go wrong with that. Taking you along on my little uh, experimental culinary journey. This, these are the ingredients I'm going to be using today. Boneless, skinless chicken breasts with no added hormones. Because I don't like it when my chicken is all kinds of hormonal. We're going to do some carry gold butter, of course. Some almond flour. Some Parmesan cheese, eggs, whatever cooking oil you want to use. I only have olive oil on hand, so I guess that's what I'm using. Oh, we're going to use some parsley flakes. Yes, I have a clove of garlic. Obviously, uh, I'm not telling you. Put in however much you feel you want to do. Put a little bit of garlic in there. That's probably too much. I don't know. Put whatever you are comfortable putting in. This is going to be enough for two big breasts, big old breasts. I'm also going to add some parsley flakes. I don't know how much I want to put in there. Does that look like enough? Yeah, it's enough. We're going we're to roll with that. Just a pinch more. Now, I am using my Nutribullet. This is called the milling blade, which I've never used before. But we're going to try it this time because we're doing just salad stuff. We're not actually doing a smoothie or a bulletproof coffee. <laughs> your uh, I just put in about three tablespoons of butter. I think that should be enough. And we are just really gonna mash all this together. I wish I had something good to mash it with. Let's see what we got. Okay, the only thing that I would have that could really suffice is this meat tenderizer, but it's kind of working. So uh, yeah, get this all nice and mixed in together. I didn't want to put the butter in with the milling just because it would be just too hard to get it all, but there should be an adequate am amount, I believe. I might throw in a little bit more butter just because I think I put too much parsley. In other words, I'm eyeballing it. There are no measurements here, but you're getting the concept. So this is what we got now. I am actually going to wrap. I'm putting it on saran wrap, which I am then going to put it back in the refrigerator for a while because I want it hard. You know, we smash it all up just to make it hard again. This is, I don't know, eight ounces. It's a big old chicken. And wrapped it in some cellophane, we are going to tenderize or flatten or whatever. We got to flatten it down, maybe a half inch. I'm my own cameraman, so I will do it while you're not watching. All right, nice and flat-ish. I'm gonna do this with two pieces, but that's what it looks like when I'm done. That butter is feeling all kinds of firm now, so let's cut that bad boy in half. That half, half, half. By the way, half. There you go. Take one of them halves there and put it in, where am I putting it? Like there. Somewhere where I can fold the whole thing over. And we folded that flippity flappity skibbity scabbity mess over the butter. That's a big old mess. Who knows how it's gonna turn out. All right, so I got my two big old chicken breasts wrapped in the butter, or the butter wrapped in the chicken breast, whatever. Wrapped in plastic, we're gonna put it on a plate. We're gonna throw it in the freezer for 30 minutes. 30 friggin' minutes. Make it happen, Kevin. Bread this crap. We have we have our little breading station. We have beaten eggs. Those are the eggs I showed before. I beaded them. Two of them. Beat it. And then we have almond flour. 
because regular flour has too many carbs, oven flour does not. And then we have Parmesan cheese. Do not get these two mixed up. They look very similar. That's right, Mofo. All right, 30 minutes of freezing is done. We do that to, you know, you know, make the bottom, not make the butter escape. First, almond of the flour. It is all almond floured up. Second is egg bath. The big bath of the eggs. And then last but not least, Parmesan cheese. Okay, all the fabulous madness is over. We got these two chicken breasts all battered up and my hands are all messed up too. <laughs> We're gonna throw this back into the freezer for another 20 minutes. While we're doing that, we're gonna start cooking up some, whatever cooking oil you're using. I'm using olive oil, because that's what I have. Because in the next 15, 20 minutes, this will get up to about 350 degrees. We're right where we want it. And the chicken will get firm enough that the butter won't escape. And it'll be awesome, because I said so. All right, all right, all right. It's been, what, 20, 15, 20, some, there's minutes. Things, freezer. We just wanted these things to firm up. We are about to throw these in our oil that has been cooking. Should be around 350 degrees, let's hope. I don't know. Careful, this could get scary. Cook, baby, cook. What, you, what we're gonna do is 30 seconds on each side. And I'm not gonna film the whole thing because I need both hands for this. All right, a little extra footage here. That's one that is done. Get off ye. All right, these things are fried up, ready right about to go into the oven. They are still raw on the inside, so we're gonna put in the oven 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. All right, after it's done cooking, you let it sit for about five minutes because the butter is still cooking it. If I did it now, we're about 10 degrees too cool. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, it turned out really good. I did enjoy it. Uh, the chicken Kiev was very, very tasty. It's the first time I've made it. But I have been making some other stiff chicken recipes that were a thousand less steps, a thousand times less cleanup, because I'm not looking forward to doing that, and tasted better. So um, the way I put it for this, would, my mindset is, would I make it again? Yes, but only if I was making it for company. If I was going, if I was being Mr. I'm bringing a date over and cooking for her, uh, that would be when I would make it worth the effort. It is good. Uh, but again, as just a quick keto recipe for myself, uh, the amount of prep is not that hard. The amount of cleanup, ooh, that's quite a bit. It's, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit of trouble. And again, I've made some uh, other uh, chicken recipes, which I will feature here later, uh, that were, in my opinion, better. And, um, and don't me, get me wrong again, I will say it again. This was good. I enjoyed it. Very good. Uh, but again, uh, I'm, I'm excited about some of the other things I'm going to be sharing with you in the near future. So stay tuned for that. And uh, if you do did, uh, try to make this, I hope you enjoy it. I found it quite enjoyable. Kind of tweak the recipe to your own tastes and love it.